Welcome back. The cleanup process from Hurricane Ian will likely take months for parts of the state. And we have seen the devastation down in Fort Myers with much of the area unrecognizable. The storm ultimately pushing through the state to Daytona Beach. Winds howled and battered the area and some people were left stranded in at their cars. It then made its way to northeast Florida, dumping heavy rain and causing trees to uproot. As the water begins to recede and people assess the damage, they may try to move it themselves, but it's important to do that safely. So joining me now is Dr. Brittany Beal, an emergency medicine a physician from Mayo Clinic. Thank you so much for joining us this morning with this important information. Of course, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So what advice do you have for people regarding uh, when it's safe to venture outside in the first place? So definitely if there's large gusts of wind, if the trees are, are blowing and you see branches on the ground, I would advise being very careful if you're going to venture outside. Also with regards to lightning, if you hear thunder, a good rule of thumb is to stay inside because lightning can strike up to 25 miles outside of the storm cloud. So those are two important things to keep in mind as far as if you hear thunder, stay inside. If you have heavy wind gusts, stay inside as well because you don't want to get hit with any debris. You know, even though it's been a couple of days, what tips do you have for safely cleaning up around the house and the yard? Always safety first. Yes. So um, in particular, we see a lot of injuries in the emergency department with people trying to clean up on their own, particularly um, tree branches or trying to get things off of their roof. I always like to say, leave it to the professionals. Um, you know, you don't want to be up on a ladder and fall. We see that way too frequently. So making sure that if you are going to go outside and try and um, remove some branches, remove some debris to um, make sure you're wearing safety equipment as far as goggles. We frequently see injuries with things getting blown into people's eyes as far as um, pieces of debris. So wearing goggles, making sure that you have gloves on if you're going to be picking up anything and um, making sure that you're not doing anything by yourself, that you have help. So you talked about the goggles and the gloves. So that's my next question. What are some of the common injuries that you see with this type of work? How can they be avoided? Yes, definitely. So we tend to see a lot of eye injuries as far as um, pieces of branches getting um, in people's eyes, people using change saws and unfortunately not using them correctly. We do see that fairly frequently. So if you've never used a chainsaw, now is not the time to start using one. Um, I would um, make sure that the professionals do that, um, wear goggles, um, don't use heavy equipment if you've never used it before. Make sure that you have someone around that has used it. Um, making sure, especially if there's any flooding, that you're not standing in the in the flood water if you don't have to. There's lots of debris um, that you could potentially step on in the water, and there's also lots of animal and human waste that can sometimes be in the water as well as chemicals. So it's very important to stay out of the flood water if you can. If you have to be in it, make sure you use soap and water when you get out of the water. And if you have any wounds, make sure that those are covered as far as put band-aids on them and make sure they're very clean after you get out of the water. Very good advice there because water certainly can be deceiving if you can't see. So anything else you want people to know about cleanup and safety and when to get to the hospital? Yes, so definitely if you have any injuries where um, you feel like there looks like there may be signs of an infection. So as far as if there's any redness or drainage from a wound that maybe you were in the water and didn't clean it properly, definitely come to the, to the emergency room. If there's any question about if there's been any electrical injury because frequently we see um, that electrical outlets get, um, get wet and then people get shocked. So if there's any question of, you know, electrocution obviously come to the emergency room um, and then another important thing to keep in mind as well is a lot of times people will bring their their grills and use generators during hurricanes and that can be very dangerous because that can cause carbon monoxide poisoning um, some of the signs of that are headache and drowsiness so if you're feeling any of those symptoms i would head to the ed emergency emer emergently very good potentially life-saving information there thank you so much doctor we really appreciate it have a great thank day. you